So last year in June, I attended a Hasselblad event in London where they announced the X1D2 and the CFV2 with the 907X. Now at the time, I was really excited about what this camera was because in my mind, I thought the potential was huge. And Hasselblad mentioned that they were planning on releasing the camera sometime around November or December 2019. Now, it's taken a long time, but it's finally here. And in this video, we're gonna be producing a detailed review of the camera. And I'm also gonna be discussing why I think this is probably the best thing that Hasselblad has produced in the last decade. So, when it leads, let's get on with this. Okay, so let's go through the specifications of this camera. So this has a 50 megapixel sensor, which is exactly the same as the one in the X1D and the GFX. Now Hasselblad talks about having 16-bit RAW files, but honestly, that's just interpolation. It's a 14-bit sensor. It's upscaled in post. The uh, camera itself, this is essentially it. So if I take the lens off the body, that's essentially the full camera. So this is the smallest, if I'm not mistaken, the smallest medium format camera currently on the market. It is freaking tiny and you know, it does look stunning. The aesthetics of this camera are absolutely incredible. In my view, this is the best looking camera that Hasselblad has produced in a long time. Probably the best looking camera anyone's produced in a very long time. Uh, in terms of like the uh, viewfinder, doesn't have a native viewfinder connected to it. You've just got the back of the screen over here, which, is useful but in bright conditions like this it is a little bit difficult to look and see what kind of images you're producing buttons wise you've got a buttons or a row of buttons at the bottom here but the touch screen is exceptional the touch screen that this camera has Hasselblad just does it mm, they just do such a good job on that front and for those of you concerned yes this does have two card slots so you know we don't need to worry about that battery goes in there as well unlike the previous CFE where the battery went in like a weird place this is much better in terms of the design the battery goes on the side over here so even if you've got it mounted on a tripod you don't need to be worrying about taking you off your tripod if you want to change the batteries or SD cards really really good design in that regard and then of course You've got a few ports on the bottom over here, which allow you to add a microphone. You've got a headphone jack, microphone jack, and then you've got some sync cables for the flash, which we will discuss later on. Now, the major issue with this camera is ergonomics to some extent. Like if you're just shooting landscape, perfectly fine because you can flip the screen out. And yes, in bright conditions, it's a little bit tricky, but for the most part, it's actually pretty good. However, if you want to shoot portrait, like, you know, it's a bit weird because you can't really shoot with this in portrait mode properly. It's a little bit tricky. So if you are going to be shooting portrait a lot like we did today, you do need a grip. And once you add the grip and the viewfinder to this camera, it does kind of make it almost complete for a couple of reasons. One, you can now shoot portrait. Effectively, it's a lot easier to shoot portrait with the grip on than it is without the grip. And honestly, this grip is really well made. You've got a front dial, a back dial, so you've got controls when it comes to ISO and aperture. And you've got this little joystick over here, which makes things a million times easier when you're like scrolling through menu settings. If some of you, I know some of you out there don't like using touchscreens, this dial over here makes things a heck of a lot better. And then you've got some buttons as well. I would have preferred if the shutter button was like at an angle over here instead of over here because it is a little bit uncomfortable to press the shutter there but I've become used to it so it's not a big deal in that regard and the viewfinder now the viewfinder bit of a downside it doesn't work with the 80mm that we're shooting with today now this 80mm I love this lens more than any other portrait lens I've ever shot with this is the best portrait lens ever I know I'm gonna say it but the viewfinder only works with the 21mm, the 30mm and the 45mm. So if you've got any other lens, this is pretty much useless. It is optical. When you look through it, it is quite nice. Feels a bit weird when you look through it, in all honesty, but it's actually quite nice, but very limiting. And it's like 500 pounds in the UK, I think like $500 in the US. And the grip's like $700 or almost 700 pounds. So it's a pricey addition to have you know the grip or the uh, uh, optical viewfinder onto the camera but it does make the camera more whole and then you've just got a more well-rounded system So 
And one of the biggest issues with the CFV2 and the 907X is the fact that there's no hot shoe, meaning that if you want to sync flash, you can do it, it's just such a pain. I wish the Hasselblad would have added like a hot shoe to the grip. I mean, I don't think it would have been that difficult. I just think it's one of those things that if they added it, it would have just made this camera a more well-rounded whole system. But the way to do it is essentially at the bottom of this camera, you've got a bunch of ports. When you remove the rubber or move the rubber out of the way, you've got two ports which say in and out. The out is the one that you want to be focusing on when you've got the 907X on, and you need a 3.5 millimeter sync cable you connect that to the bottom and then you've got it connected to your trigger and then you can use flash and it works perfectly fine problem is you can't put this trigger anywhere because there's no cold shoe on here unless you've got the optical viewfinder and if you've got the optical viewfinder you can remove this and you can kind of frankenstein things together by adding this on and then you know almost okay ideally if Hasselblad could produce like a cold shoe mount that you can attach to the little section over here that would go a long way in making this camera system a little better in terms of usability but at the moment we don't have that so bit of a pain in that regard but fortunately flash does work we have managed to get flash working with this camera it works perfectly fine 2000 of, of a second sync speed and the reason why that's extremely useful is because today in Leeds we're actually doing a real shoot for a proper company and the company is called Billingham they produced a new color for one of their bags and uh, they got me to take some pictures for them so let's uh, carry on with flash and take some pictures with the Hasselblad When it comes to image quality, the 907X and the CFE is identical to the X1D, and this is because it's using the same sensor and the same lenses. The major benefit of the CFE is the fact that it's a more expandable and a more flexible system. Nonetheless, one of the things I love about Hasselblad cameras when it comes to the images it produces is color. Hasselblad color science is just exceptional, and even though this is a 14-bit sensor, that color science is still coming through. When you look at the, uh, the way that the CFE rendered the chocolate leather tones and the way they rendered the navy blue tones this is something which is actually really difficult for a lot of the other cameras that i shot with uh, a lot of the other cameras that we shot the billingham bag with it was producing more of a tan leather color and a more electric blue and that's obviously not the color of the bag but the Hasselblad does a fantastic job and uh, when you're going through the images it's clear to see that the way that it renders detail it's just extremely sharp there's a, a great deal of richness and clarity to it so from an image quality standpoint there aren't really any compromises Hasselblad does a fantastic job on a regular basis and this is something that is very apparent with the uh, XCD system overall I really do love the lenses of this system and uh, colors are one of the major advantages of Hasselblad cameras So, final thoughts and conclusions. Now, if it's not clear already, I absolutely love this camera. It's the best camera, the best system that I've shot with in a very, very long time. It's just beautiful. Design-wise, aesthetics, the feel, it's just mm, almost a perfect camera. There are a few things that I think Hasselblad could do to make it better. And the first thing is a hot shoe or a cold shoe. Being able to sync flash effectively and practically, just it's just gonna go a heck of a long way. And I think Hasselblad should really do something to uh, help in that regard. And the second thing, which I'm not sure Hasselblad will do anytime soon because they didn't, they didn't do it for the CFE Mark I, and that is producing a 645 full frame version of this camera with the larger sensor. I mean, this sensor, it's okay, but you know, it's not, it's, it's pretty small when you compare it to like a six by six back over here. I mean, it's tiny compared to a six by six and it's relatively small compared to a 645 camera. So the fact that Hasselblad has a 100C sensor available. Anyway, they've got a 100 megapixel sensor available for their 860 cameras, so they could just repurpose that, put it into a CFE, and that would make this more compatible with everything 
far more effectively with their V-mount systems, with their 8-series lenses, and for XED lenses, some of them could com cover this sensor quite comfortably. I have had discussions. Some of those lenses could cover the, the larger sensor quite comfortably, and if it doesn't, you can always just put in a crop mode in the, sen in the camera as part of the software. So it's very feasible to offer that system, and I think the Hasselblad should do it. I'm not sure if they're going to do it, but other than that, this is, without a doubt, the best camera system I've shot with in a very long time. It's pricey. You know, I don't know if I can recommend it based on the price because there are so many other things you can get which are better value for money, for professionals, but people who love camera systems and just love shooting with things that are beautiful and well-designed, yeah, this is probably the best thing you can buy. Anyway, just want to say thank you so much for watching our video. If you like this video, hit the like button. Please subscribe, share this video. Make sure you check out our new store on the website as well. We've got lots of cool stuff on there, which really does help the channel. And uh, hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you.